Uh, what about credit cards? So on a credit card, uh, you've got this 16 digit number, that's your credit card number. And you may know that there actually is some information encoded into it. Like the first digit, the very first digit on the left hand side indicates what kind of credit card it is. Um, that first four digit, if it's a four, then it's a Visa. If it's a five, it's a MasterCard. If it's a six, it's a Discover. And then the next few digits, I don't know exactly how many, uh, that is basically the, the bank number. That is the number of the bank that issued this particular card. So, so this card that I just found on the internet, right? That would be a, a bank number that corresponds to SunTrust, whatever uh, that bank is. And then the remaining digits, except for the last one, would be the account number within that bank, right? So all the credit cards issued by SunTrust would have the next few digits be the same. And then it's the remaining digits that would be changing for each individual card. And then this last digit here is calculated from the previous ones in order to know whether the previous numbers had been read correctly or not. So the idea is, let's say you are inputting the numbers into a form. You're on a website and they ask you to type in your credit card number. So you type in your credit card number and then you may have noticed that some on some websites it can immediately tell without you ever clicking on a button to say like, you know, submit this transaction. It can immediately tell whether you have inputted those numbers correctly or not. Let me give you a little, a little bit of background information. If you are a merchant on, you know, who, who processes credit cards, who accepts credit cards as payment, every time you run a transaction, every time you swipe that card, and then, you know, if you've ever seen those like little um, terminals they use at the cashier, right? You, you plug in your card, it says, um, you know, please wait. And then what it's doing is it's talking to a transaction processor company to run that credit card number and then send the funds over to the merchant. Every time the merchant does that, uh, they incur a cost. The transaction processor will usually just take two or three percent of the transaction amount and keep that for themselves as a processing fee. So if you buy something for $10, uh, you know, roughly, what is that? Uh, 20, 30 cents of that $10. Am I doing that correctly? Um, yeah, 20 or 30 cents of that calculation or that, that amount is basically the processing fee. Um, and so the mer it's in the merchant's interest to determine as best as possible, is this a valid credit card number or did the user maybe input the numbers incorrectly or when I swiped the magnetic stripe, you know, for, or for cards that use, still use the magnetic stripe, did it read those numbers off the magnetic stripe correctly? And so if the merchant is able to kind of determine whether that's a correct credit card number or not, or at least it appears to be, then they could maybe incur the cost of running that transaction. And if they uh, run the transaction and uh, the credit card number is incorrect, guess what? Still costs you 20 or 30 cents, right? Every time you run that transaction, no matter, if, even no matter whether you're purchasing something or returning something. If you return something, the merchant's gonna be giving money back to you, but they still have to pay that two or three cent, two or three percent on top of that transaction fee. Anyway, let me let me show you how this algorithm works to, in order to determine whether a credit card number at least appears to be correct. Um, so the way you do it is you double every other digit. So for the barcodes, it was like multiplying by three every other digit. With the um, with the credit cards, it's it's doubling every other digit. So this four becomes an eight. This three becomes a six. The seven becomes 14, this becomes eight, this becomes 10, this is 14, this is 12, and this is 18. Okay, and then you got the other numbers, five, nine, zero, three, four, zero, three, and one. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna sum up all the digits. And this is where uh, you have to be really careful because you're not summing up the numbers, you're summing up the digits. So we get eight plus five plus six plus nine plus one plus four. 
So you don't add in 14, you add in 1 plus 4, plus 0, plus 8, plus 3, plus 1, plus 0, plus 0, plus 4, plus 1, plus 4, plus 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 1, plus 8, plus 1. And in this case, you should get 70. So if the sum that you get is a multiple of 10, then all the numbers check out. In other words, if the sum mod 10 is equal to 0. So does this mean that it's a valid credit card? Does this mean that if we run this credit card, we're guaranteed to get the money? Does this mean that it actually corresponds to a real account number? No, no for all of that. Right? All this does is let you know whether the numbers that have been inputted or the numbers that have been read on the barcode on the on the uh, mag stripe or the numbers that you got out of the little chip are at least correct computationally. So this is designed to catch common input errors. For example, like transposing two digits. If you type in a credit card number and you just like switch this three and the nine, it would catch that. And the reason it would catch that is because um, now the nine would get doubled and the three would not get doubled. And so when you added up the digits, the sum would not come out to be correct. Or if you accidentally duplicated a digit. So instead of typing in uh, the 3 and the 9, you just typed in two 3s and you skipped the 9. It would catch that as well because now, the, uh, the again, the sum would not come out to be correct. Uh, if you typed in extra digits or too few digits, that's actually easy to catch. Um, all credit card numbers are 16 digits long, and so if you only type in 15 or you type in 17, it's really easy to catch that because it's just a long length. You know, and finally also, if you just inputted the wrong digit, so instead of typing a 3, you typed in a 4, um, it would obviously catch that as well. The sum wouldn't work out. So this is not foolproof by any means. It just catches common input errors. Can you think of a way to have this credit card number, and the one that I'm showing on the screen is just, you know, totally a fake one that I made up. It just happens to work out, right? So what I did in order to compute this number here was I just generated a whole bunch of random numbers and then I did the calculation and I saw what it added up to and then I just need to figure out what do I have to add to this number to make it come up to a, a multiple of 10. So I would have added up all those numbers, gotten 69 and realized I just need to put a 1 on the end to make it 70. And that's what the banks do when they issue a credit card was they just uh, you know, come up with a credit card type and then their bank code and then the account number, sum that all up using this technique of doubling some of the digits and then figure out what the difference is between that number and the next multiple of 10 and that's the digit that gets stuck on the end. How could I input the numbers so that uh, it would still work out but it is not the correct number? Swap the first and the third numbers. So if I swap that four and the three, then the sum will still work out. <clears throat> or if I swap the 5 and the 9, the sum will still work out. But really, how, how common is it to transpose two digits that are not next to each other? It's not that common. It's more, much more common, way more common, for a human to transpose two digits that are right next to each other, not ones that are further apart. So it's not foolproof it will let some numbers slip by, but at least you, you know, you're reasonably sure that the numbers are correct. And then the, pro the merchant could make the um, decision to then run the credit card number, incur that charge, and then see if it actually is correct.